It's a mystery that has really fascinated people for 160 odd years. Um, it's, it's one of those great mysteries that you know is solvable, but at the same time was very difficult. That's been, and there have been many, many attempts over, over the years. Uh, for many years I've been, it's been my interest to collect um, oral history and um, my involvement started when Paris Canada approached me. Um, at the time, the guy's name was Robert Gonier, and he approached me with, uh, with my theory on whereabouts the ships may be. What is known about the Franklin Expedition is known from historical sources and from a very important Inuit oral history. So we know things from explorers that have, uh, have went out to look for the Franklin Expedition and found artifacts and, and talked to the Inuit. But at the same time, the ice conditions give us an idea of what could have happened to the ships, why they got into trouble, why they had to abandon, where they would have drifted, um, all these different aspects really require <clears throat> our good knowledge of the ice conditions in the area where the ships became uh, beset and were abandoned. So by combining ice information with the historical information, it's possible to get a reasonably clear picture of what happened to the expedition. The, the role of the Inuit testimony uh, was, was crucial uh, to start with the reason we are looking in two areas is because the Inuit, in their accounts to European explorers, mention that the ships were in two areas. So if it wouldn't be for that, we would only be looking in Victoria Strait. Um, that guided from the beginning of our efforts and with a lot of our predecessors, uh, guided where, where to put the, uh, the, the resources and the efforts to search. Uh, my theories started way back, um, maybe when I was very young, hearing stories from my good grandmother and grandparents. And actually, um, as I get older, um, um, when I went to school and the teachers started talking about um, Franklin's um, expedition that all died on Kingdom Island, um, that got me interested in collecting more more stories and actually going out to the sites that. Um, Franklin's men might have had landed, um, like Victory Point. Um, so my work started off in in my own interest of um, collecting stories. Some other clues may be, for example, the fact that the Inuits say that the ship went down when it, the ship went down when they came back to see it, uh, the masts were sticking out of the water. So that could be a clue of depth. What's going to be really interesting is the clues, now that we know where one of the ships um, is, we, uh, we can use that information to go further and to go deeper into the study of the shipwreck and to understand how um, the Inuit actually interacted with that wreck that was there, what they took, where they took those artifacts, and better understand the artifacts that are elsewhere in the area. Are they coming from the ship? And by knowing now that the ship is so close uh, to some, some of those places, it helps us to understand the dispersion and the dynamics of the whole story. One of the very important clues, for example, was a map from an Inuit hunter from 1869 that uh, was very hard to interpret. And the reason it was hard to interpret was because when people looked at that map, they thought we're looking at land, coastlines, and, and water. But really, when you look at that map and compare it to satellite imagery, you see that it's ice that the Inuit would have been drawing in some areas. And that, for example, in this case, helped to narrow down the search area.